We can use SPCC to calibrate the color of images with narrowband filters. In this case, we're going to create a color image from these two images taken with an H-alpha filter and an oxygen-3 filter. To do this, we open Channel Combination and put the H-alpha image in the R channel and the oxygen-3 image in the G and the B. And we apply globally to create a color image. As this image already had an astrometric solution and we have this option enabled, the resulting color image has inherited that astrometric solution. The color of the image isn't calibrated, so we open the STF process window, unlink the RGB channels and apply the auto stretch. Now we're going to configure SPCC to work with narrowband images. To do this, all we have to do is enable narrowband filters mode. When we enable this mode, the SPCC window changes and six new fields appear. We use these fields to give the tool our filter specifications. By default, the wavelengths are the ones for the composition we've just done, so all we have to do is change the bandwidth for each filter. In this case, we only need to change the H-alpha bandwidth to 3.5 nanometers. Now we select an area of the sky background and drag it to the region of interest section of the process window. We select the ideal quantum efficiency curve because we are measuring two discrete wavelengths. Lastly, we need to change the white reference. When we create this type of image, we want to know the intensity ratio of each of the nebula's emission bands. We want the two bands to have the same flux proportion in the image as they do in reality. So we need to change the white reference to photon flux. Now we apply the process. In this case, the top graph shows the relationship between the H-alpha and the oxygen-3. We can see that there is a linear relationship between the fluxes in the catalog, calculated in narrowband, and the fluxes in our image, also in narrowband. In the bottom graph, as the images in the green and blue channels are the same, we get a straight line with a Y value of 1. This means that we don't need to rescale the blue channel with respect to the green. Now we open the STF again, link the RGB channels, and apply the auto stretch. Now the ratio between the H-alpha and oxygen-3 emissions in our image is correct. Now we're going to use SPCC to calibrate the color of a Hubble palette image consisting of three master images, sulfur-2, H-alpha, and oxygen-3. We create the Hubble palette by putting the sulfur image in the red channel, the hydrogen image in the green channel, and the oxygen image in the blue channel. This arranges the three primary colors in order of decreasing wavelength, just like the wavelengths of the filter emission bands. Now we create a new image. As in the previous example, these grayscale images already had an astrometric solution, so the color image has inherited that same astrometric solution. To display the image, we open the STF and apply the auto stretch. The sky background in this image is quite balanced, so we don't need to unlink the RGB channels. We can see where the background areas are quite clearly. Now we're going to select this area to make a preview and set it as the background reference. Using SPCC, we're going to calibrate the intensity of each emission line. First, we activate narrowband filters mode and configure the filters. The sulfur 2 has a wavelength of 671.6 and the filter is 3 nanometers. The H-alpha has a wavelength of 656.3 and the filter is 3.5 nanometers and the oxygen-3 in the blue channel can stay as it is. 
we configure the background area and change the white reference to photon flux. Lastly, we select the ideal QE curve. The bottom graph shows that the fit between the H-alpha and oxygen-3 emissions is quite linear. But the fit between the H-alpha and the sulfur-2 has more dispersion. This is because there is very little difference between the wavelengths of the two emissions. The difference in color is therefore minimal. In fact, if we look at the value ranges on the x and y axes of this graph, we can see that they're very small. The range is between about 0.8 and 1 on the x-axis and between 0.7 and 1.4 on the y-axis. However, in the bottom graph, as the wavelengths are further apart, we can see that the value ranges are quite a lot wider, between 0 and almost 2 on the x-axis, and between 0 and 2.5 on the y-axis. We don't need to worry about the greater dispersion on this graph because what we're seeing is an amplification factor, which we didn't have in previous cases. The color correction between the two emissions is very small with a factor of around 1. This calibration will calculate the intensity of each emission, but the result will never be very good because the H-alpha will always dominate. In some cases, the oxygen-3 emission can be prominent, like in the core of this nebula. But the sulfur, which is normally very weak, will always be very dim. If we look at the three channels separately, it's very clear. In the red channel, we have the sulfur-2, and the H-alpha in the green channel is much brighter. For this type of image, we recommend using color calibration instead of SPCC. Let's take a look at why. We want the overall intensity of the nebula to be the same in all three color channels, so we're going to select the nebula itself as the white reference. Images like this need an intrinsic color calibration referencing an element inside the image, in this case, the emission nebula. Now let's open color calibration and select the nebula itself as the white reference. We create a preview covering the central area of the nebula and configure it as the region of interest for the white reference. We'll use the same area we used in SPCC for the background reference. Finally, we uncheck the Structure Detection box. If we leave this option enabled, Color Calibration will detect the small structures in the image and will only take the color of the stars into account. But if we uncheck this box, the process takes all the light inside the white reference preview into account. We apply the process, and now the color is optimized for this type of image. We can see the predominance of oxygen-3 in the nucleus and the green and orangish areas. We can also calibrate the color of a narrowband image acquired with a color sensor and dual or triple band filters. The problem with these images is the crossover of the primary color sensitivity curves in the color sensors. Consequently, these images don't completely isolate the different bands of the filters in single primary colors. Therefore, if we calibrate these images in narrowband mode, we won't get a good linear fit. For this type of calibration, we have a set of combined filters that mix the sensitivity curves of the color sensor with the transmission curves of this kind of filter. We have this set for dedicated CMOS cameras and for Canon full-spectrum cameras. We'll use a Sony CMOS sensor with Botter UHC filters in this case. As we can see, each filter passband has its representation in each of the three primary colors. We select this filter, define a background area, and apply the process. Now we adjust the auto stretch to see the result. and the linear fit of the two color correction graphs is very good. However, if we switch to narrowband mode, put the Botter filter data, 
and apply again, we'll get a much worse linear fit between the hydrogen and oxygen photometry. This produces a 1.5% bias in the color correction factors. Un, dos, tres, cuatro.